Okay, so we're going to take uh, just a quick little swing review here. A um, little limited on to what slowing down things I can do with uh, YouTube, but um, let's uh, work on it. Let, let's talk of this movement now to the top of the backswing and what we're seeing here. Um, this is definitely an example of a lot of the things that you're feeling in your swing. You, you know, you're asking me if you were coming under and things like that, and everybody's telling you you're swinging underneath and whatever the case may be. This is just a completely over-rotated, overturned backswing. Um, we're talking about the degrees of freedom rotation. We're talking about how much your pelvis turns, how much your upper body can turn on the backswing. And now, does there come a point where a golfer, uh, it might hurt a golfer's timing if they over-rotate? Well, yeah, if they over-rotate the pelvis and the hip area to, to an extreme extent, like I'm seeing here, the tour average here is going to be much closer to like 40 degrees, 45 degrees. Um, you know, if, if the golfer had something closer to the tour average of hip turn, we would see much more of the belt buckle here. Uh, this is just this completely overturned... Uh, hip movement to where the arms wrap way behind and the hips have turned almost you know an extreme amount of degrees um, it's made the right hip lock up and it's given it a much too much chance of the golf club to get way behind and what happens then on the way down as we see this golfer moving down looks like a pretty conventional movement down as his pelvis is now more in a normal location but it has allowed the golf club to get um, a little behind the golfer so that right at this point they have to start thrusting slightly towards the ball. One of the worst moves a golfer can make is taking, if you took right in between the center of the pelvis of the golfer, somewhere in the middle, thrusting that towards the ball on the downswing. Now I'm going to suggest to you that the golfer does that. The golfer thrusts towards the ball when the club comes too far from behind and they can't quite get the club at the ball. They start to do body gyrations to try to line the club up and, you know, time the club for the impact. So then they'll start to thrust their hips at the ball. And this is where we start, you know, seeing that take place. And you can see uh, how out of control the, the lower body movement is by just how much that, that, that foot drags. So I want you to take a look at the, uh, the right foot here as I bring this back to more of the beginning here. Uh, of the downswing. I want you to watch the right leg and the right foot lose total control as the hips start to thrust out more towards the ball down the fairway. Uh, when we see the right leg slide like that and get out of control, it's from the center of the pelvis not only thrusting towards the ball but also thrusting somewhat towards the fairway as well. Uh, so you definitely want to avoid that at all costs. So what are the correct what 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 do I suggest to help you out? I would suggest a hip turn at the top of the back swing. Uh, that would be probably maximum right there. So I, I would uh, I would have a pelvis movement top of the back swing. That would be too much. I, I would I, if I was working with you, we would have a pelvis movement more like that. Jeez, I can't get this thing to stop. That would be a little bit much. That would be maximum. I would bring it back. YouTube's a little tougher to uh, to use here. I would say that would be maximum at the top of the backswing. Pelvis move. I'd get the thighs a little further apart. Maybe even a little less uh, with your hip motion and then starting the other way. And I think there would be less need to thrust and a lot less need to thrust towards the hole and drag that right leg. So those are some little ideas. Hopefully you'll be able to integrate some of those and we'll see a different looking swing next time you post it up. Hopefully we get rid of that, that drag. Okay, so now we're going to do a swing review. We're going to pull up an image capture here and we're going to discuss our, our next swing review. And I kind of took the snapshots of this so it'll save us a chance from uh, having to uh, deal with YouTube slow-mo. Uh, working on a system where I could suck them out of YouTube slow-mo and talk over them, but it's taking a little too long, so I want to get to these. Uh, this is probably the best camera view of all the ones that I saw. Uh, this gives me a definite frame of reference. Obviously, I'm not there when this video is shot. This gives me the best frame of reference. I can kind of see that the, the camera is on the, on the ball line. Uh, a lot of times when you, someone shoots face-on, you know, the camera could be in slightly different spots when we're viewing two, in two dimensions, 2D. 
and uh, we're not shooting down from high above at a right angle to the club in hands, it can kind of throw the reference off a little bit. So some quick ideas here for a little uh, web swing review. Uh, what, we, what we discussed here on the back swing was you could see the sweet spot of the club. You could see this little arrow I have here down in the second picture. Uh, so we're looking more in that area. Uh, the sweet spot of the club is to the right of the hands, pretty considerably. Uh, I drew a, a red line in here to give you an idea where the shaft and the, and the sweet spot would need to be um, to, to have it more in line, more between the arms, and definitely promote a little better path of the club um, when we're striking these balls. So trying to match it more to that red line at the top of the backswing, that's quite a difference in the angle there. Um, there's a couple of things that are taking place towards the top of the backswing. The golf club is going through its heaviest bending mode. So what I mean by that is the shaft is going to, the, the sweet spot of the club is going to bend down. So it, it's going to take its biggest bend mode. So when this thing gets to the right of the hands, the sweet spot to the right of the hands, and then it takes a bend mode, uh, this golf club is going through a major mode of bending while you're changing directions. And it's going to throw that golf club into different areas. So now you can see that. Uh, the sweet spot of the club to the right of the hands in this picture here where I'm moving the mouse. Now when we go down to this bottom area and we take a look, the sweet spot of the club ends up still a little to the right of the hands, but here now the reference point is more behind the golf. Now the golf club's coming in at a very low right of the hands angle. This right shoulder is working down more towards uh, the right foot, and you can see how this right arm gets more trapped behind the body. And because that club head was so far to the right, now he has to, to try to make any type of contact, he's going to thrust, you know, do a hip thrust towards the ball. So now you can see I drew a circle in there to show how he thrusted his hips towards the ball. And that hip thrust creates a very small clearance gap. Uh, it creates a very small clearance gap to where the golfer then stands the, the grip end of the club and the shaft of the club up very tall while the head still sits very flat and low. And that's how we get a lot of those underplane movements. Um, I kind of drew a little uh, yellow thing here on the back of the golfer, this little reference point somewhere on the back, and how the hip thrust and how little room this club has and little clearance angle it has to come in makes the golfer kind of deflect their upper body up while their hips thrust out and it stands the club up and gives very little clearance angle. And then here you kind of see the byproduct of it on the through swing. We get a very high exit of the club. So here we could see the hands. I uh, hope everybody can see where I'm moving the mouse here. Here we see the hands and club um, at a much higher angle here than what would be what we're looking for more through the shoulder. Uh, this, is, this, this part here is not the one I'd work on. A lot of golfers would go right away and try to adjust that. It's earlier parts that are leading up to that. So I would definitely take a look at uh, the shaft, uh, the sweet spot being less right of your, right of your hands here um, to help promote it not being as, right, as far back behind and right of your hands at this point. And I think we'll eliminate a lot of this hip thrust and this high exit and this higher club at, uh, at impact. Hope that helps. Thank you.